we have a major story from the Daily Wire. Oh. This is crazy. I my, my jaw hits the floor. Uh, hit the floor when I saw this. Matt Walsh uncover uh, undercover investigation catches trans healthcare providers rubber stamping sex change surgeries. Basically, they had a producer call in and within 22 minutes in a virtual appointment, even after saying they weren't dysphoric, the person wrote a letter saying they were. And it's simple. There's a lot of money to be made in rubber stamping these things and sending them out. And you are protected politically when you make money this way. The Daily Wire reports some of the nation's largest trans healthcare providers are rubber stamping approvals for life altering sex change procedures and even falsely representing health diagnoses of patients. So insurance companies will cover the medical expenses. Daily Wire host Matt Walsh revealed in a tweet thread Wednesday. So apparently these doctors will say explicitly, if we don't give you this diagnosis, the insurance will not cover it. So you need to be diagnosed this way. And then what, let me let me actually I think I have the uh, the thread here. I think he explicitly brings up that the his undercover uh, producer says that uh, he's not dysphoric. Let me see. He says the letter keeps capitalizing orky uh, orkyectomy. Is that how you pronounce it? Without yeah. and before it. As if it's just been copy pasted into a template, Greg followed up to learn why he had been diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Plume admitted they just use letter templates provided by WPATH. He says, just checking on this to make sure this will be okay in the letter. I'm not really considering myself dysphoric, so wanted to check on that one thing. Otherwise, letter looks great. The, the doctor says, the care coordinator. Hi, Chelsea. Look at this. You get I, uh, iPhone says she, her, hers. This is uh, redacted a care coordinator with Plume. I will page your provider on this to see what she says. I know we rewrite we write letters based on WPATH templates, but I can ask your provider if it's necessary to have it. And if not, perhaps it can be removed. Later, Plume's nurse confirmed in order for the surgery to be paid for, the dysphoria diagnosis would need to remain. At the same time, the nurse appeared to confuse as to why Chelsea Bussey had requested testicle removal in the first place, saying... Uh, let's see. He's, he's, uh, so Chelsea Bussey, which is the undercover, this is a, a male producer for Matt Walsh. Thanks for getting back to me. I was just saying I don't feel dysphoric right now, but it's okay to keep the letter, right? The nurse says, nurse practitioner, oh, okay. Well, the surgery is related to, to the gender dysphoria, which you which you diagnosed with. It is controlled with HRT, but in order to get the surgery to be paid uh, for a GCS, it will need to be related to gender dysphoria, which you are diagnosed with. Does that make sense? Or is the orky not gender confirming? So it seems like basically what they're uncovering. These these companies, they don't care. They want the money. They want the money. Look, I can't get my dog on an airplane with a letter from a doctor anymore. But in 22 minutes, you can be castrated and it can be paid for by insurance. I mean, this is sheer insanity. Whole industry is insanity right now. Yeah, it's Man. marketing. They're marketing. And look, it's the same as the vaxes, right? And they're marketing. Dude, but they're, they're protected. Marketing. And this is the crazy thing. They're Jimmy, protected. That's right. Jimmy Dore had such a great bit that I saw today. He was like, when it came to big pharma, people would say, people say, don't do your own research. The media comes out, don't do your own research. He's like, what? That's crazy. We used to call doing your own research, reading. You're yeah. saying not to read. And he goes, we would never that tell. That was an excellent bit. By he way. said, we would never tell anyone to, to, to not do their own research in any other area. Yeah. Imagine if you were like, no, I think I'm gonna buy. I'm, I'm gonna go buy a new car. Don't look into it. <laughs> well, if I don't, how am I supposed to know what car to get? Ask the salesman. He's the expert. Yeah, it was a great bit. <laughs> it's really absolutely good. fantastic. The salesman, he's the expert. No, it's brilliant. What, it's what, it's what, worth what, watching. What we have with big pharma and these medical practices, political protection. Yeah. Far left extremists saying, "Do not look into it," and the media saying, "That's right. If you do, something's wrong with you." Yep. Remember when the New York Times wrote not to think critically? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. If you, I look. If if it, I don't know, I don't know how, how to help these people. Genuinely, if they're like, I was told not to think critically, so I stopped. Well, like, listen, okay, I mean, okay, since we'll we were like five years old, right? Nursery school, kindergarten. You're told. I mean, it was it was like the most ubiquitous statement on the planet when you came to doctors. Get a second opinion. Yeah. Until we learned Fauci's name. Then anyway, if you got a second opinion, you were a crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> you were anti-science. You didn't trust the experts. <sighs> Give me a break. Mm -hmm. Look Give at this. Give me a break. This is crazy. Matt Walsh posts the letter, which says she reports ongoing gender dysphoria, despite the fact that in texts, the producer said, I do not have dysphoria. Right. So this is also something that we learned a number of months ago when Jamie Reed, who was working at a clinic that was giving treatment towards minors, 
came out and basically said that there's oh, I'm an sorry, entire I had, rubber I had it backwards. stamp routine sorry, that I, takes I, place. I just, sorry, uh, I had to correct. I had it backwards. That was the uh, earlier tweet. They then asked about it, and he then said he didn't have dysphoria. So my mm -hmm. mistake. Sorry, mm -hmm. continue. No, no, I was just saying that a whistleblower named Jamie Reed, who was working at the St. Louis Transgender Center, was talking about the kind of rubber stamp routine that happens here and how there are these templates and what they do is give people sort of tips on what they can say to the therapist to ensure that they're going to be uh, given the green light to go ahead with these procedures. I went to a doctor for a checkup a little while ago, like a month ago, and uh, the doctor was like, how have you been feeling like ment mentally? I was like, oh, I'm existentially, I got a lot of stress. You know, the world economic order, the, the how it's shifting, and he's like, you want something for that? And I was like, do you want to like do a blood test on me? Do you want a psychological <laughs> opera? Like, do you want to do an eval first, or do you just want to hand me some Prozac? Like, the guy just, he was so ready to give me the, the, the yeah. medicine, the, the drugs. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, the medicine, the yeah. psychoactive, whatever, suppressants, or whatever the hell they Qu are. Question for you guys, do we know which state uh, Greg was uh, chatting with this company. Do we know which state this company was located in? Uh, I think we we probably do. Let me. Uh, the reason me I ask is is my next question is going to be why isn't the state attorney general opening an immediate insurance fraud investigation on these providers? Oh, I mean, this is insurance fraud. This is so, insurance so fraud. I wanna, I, wanna, I want to clarify what I was saying with the letter. The so first the letters the the, the letter is posted. Uh, let me let me grab it from uh, this. Here we go. So in tweet number 13, he says, three days later, Plume sent this letter to Chelsea Bussey, who does not exist, saying he was experiencing gender dysphoria. The producer then responded saying, no, I don't. The coordinator then responded, well, it has to be in there. So keeping the letter as is saying this person has dysphoria, despite the person t texting saying, no, that's not true. Uh, that's insurance fraud. That's, that's blatant insurance fraud. I mean, that there's your probable cause. Mm -hmm. Also, it, potentially medical malpractice. These are all over the country. Certainly. Apparently. This, is certainly. All this is all over the country. But, that, the, but, but the insurance fraud is criminal. That's a felony. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that the other elements of it aren't criminal is also That's an a whole indictment of our laws. Yeah. 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 And, and this is something I mentioned. Jamie Reed is a whistleblower. We also had a Helena Kirshner on who was describing her experience and the fact that she went to Planned Parenthood and was able to get the maximum dose she could get after a, a relatively brief conversation where I think she said she didn't even talk to a doctor. I mean, they're they just Planned pushing Parenthood this stuff for a through. few minutes and then she got the maximum dose of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, initially, the, the person she was speaking with wasn't even going to give her that, but then she asked for it and they just gave it to her. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And so if you had any other field of medicine where there were this many scandals with this many different whistleblowers coming forward and saying, yeah, there's actually this entire complex set up around trying to give me the proper answers to tell to other physicians to get certain treatments that they're supposed to be vetting me for objectively, we'd be having a national dialogue about it. But we're not when we're talking about literally amputating body parts that cannot ever be replaced or restored once they're removed and mutilating children. The medical marijuana rack was a racket. They were like, That's you fair. gotta tell them that you have That's fair. stress or they won't give you the medical marijuana card. So you right, go in and you're right. like, I have stress. And then they give you the card. And then I think in some areas, right, if, if you said that you had that kind of stress and they gave you a medical card, it actually precluded you from being able to own a gun. You'd, for, for, for 12 months. For 12 but, months. Okay. But you'd, that, have, you'd have to put that you were a current drug user. That mm -hmm. stuff is a, a, amputating. There's no amputation. Mm -hmm. It's it's a license to buy marijuana, which is ridiculous. I don't know why. Much less scheduled. serious than yeah, removing a body part. Cutting an arm off or, yeah. or a body part off or testicles or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm very libertarian on the weed issue. I, I think it's, I, I couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. Yeah. Never, never, never came across any bad guys that were, you know, trying to kill anybody. But now I'm starting to wonder, others. to be completely honest. <clears throat> Are you? Well, I mean, Why? you've you've got all of these uh, detrimental things that they're trying to pass on to people. So I just don't trust them. If, oh, they, that's they, a different story. But if yeah, we, they, we, if, if if Democrats came out and they were like, we actually think Jello pudding's fantastic, I'd be like, I'm not gonna. Eat that. <laughs> okay, I'm with well, you. And on that, that was the thing. What's I mean, look, here? <laughs> I've, I've said this before. I'm absolutely. I don't eat the sugar anyway. <laughs> I I'm totally against the federal war on drugs. I think if a state wants to, eat, you know, ban marijuana, I'm totally fine with that. But I remember when I was graduating high school about ten years ago. This was when the massive push was happening for weed to be legalized and when we actually started to see it happen. And 
all of the arguments being made, instead of making the libertarian argument, which I don't necessarily agree with, but which I think is a better argument, and that is, this might be bad for me, but let me do it. There was so much mythologizing about how this is going to cure your cancer, and it's a miracle. It's like, okay, you, you don't have to do that either, right? You, you don't have to push it all the way in that direction. But I hear you. Yeah. Uh, the, the, it, it, that also made me more suspicious at the time. It, it just but All that, of the bombastic claims about how great it was. That's marketing, though. Yeah. Which, which, look, big pharma is just downright demonic mm. in the way they market these. Oh, things, yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, they're marketing. I mean, you watch TV in the middle of the day. I have it on in the background, right, when I'm working. Every other commercial is a oh, farmer yeah. commercial for something. The side effects are, it's a 45-second spot, a 30-second spot. The side effects, and the horrible. Si disclaimer the, is 29 seconds. The, second the side effects often do what you're trying to treat. That, that's the point. And, and then after that commercial, yeah. like two commercials later, it's some law firm. It's like, you could be entitled to money <laughs> right, if you right. took this medicine from that same that's right. company that's now been recalled. Yes, like, wait a minute. There, there'll be one commercial that's like, are you suffering from acid <laughs> indigestion? See if acidosto is, yeah, is, right is, is, is right for you. Side effects may include explosive diarrhea and headaches. <laughs> then the next commercial is, are you suffering from headaches and explosive diarrhea? <laughs> See if this drug <laughs> is right for you. <laughs> Zantac <laughs> is going to kill you. you know. No, it's, it's, it's nuts. I mean, it's just crazy. And I think we learned quite a bit about Big Pharma in the last few years. But I, th mm. I think what they've done... You know, John Stossel did a good expose on it years back where he, he made a strong argument uh, for Big Farm, right? I guess his brother works in that industry and he was saying how on average they spend about 800, this was then, about $850 million to develop a drug and some don't it work, others do work, but they're just not prescribed. And So he made a good argument for why certain things cost the way they do. I don't think anyone ever foresaw what we saw in the last couple of years. I mean, you saw a pharma commercial, one every 10 commercials. My friends and I are on Brought a text chain. Brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah, my, my buddies and I are on a text chain. One's a banker for one of the large banks, but he's very politically like-minded. And we just run jokes all day long. Like, have you taken your Sky Rizzy today? Do you have your Relaxium and your Prevagen? Like, it's just nuts. Relaxium. It's, every, you know, it's just crazy. Every other commercial. It was when they told me not to question it. Right. I was like, what in exactly. the hell right. is yep. happening Don't look right into it. Now? It, yep, yeah. yeah. Trust, yeah. trust the experts. Man. And also that them, so them saying that they weren't looking into things, right? Like when Fauci was saying he wouldn't even entertain lab leak. He won't even entertain it? You won't yeah. even think about it? Really? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.